And then the fundamental things about every time you do take similar signal, you have noise and how you can uh, explain the quality of your image. A good way in general is you talk about signal to noise ratio. This is of course in other fields such as telecommunication and other fields always talk about signal to noise ratio. So it's better for me to just give you an example. Uh, so here, there's signal here, there's a square, but it's very obscure and hard to know because in fact, the signal level is actually smaller than the level of noise. So something's there. What if the signal level is comparable to noise level? Here, I define noise as standard deviation of the background. Okay, that's, there's something there, but it's a very, very hard. In fact, this is, we are visually seeing, but if you look through this profile, it looks almost like this. Oh my gosh, how can you know what's going on over here, right? Because signal to noise ratio is about one. So to be able to reliably detect an object, in general, we could we call signal to noise ratio should be bigger than one. So example like this two, you see some things over here compared to the background. Noise. Hopefully that that makes sense. That's why uh, not just ideal theory, but just the reality and real experiment. You have to take care and consider about the nature of the noise. And in fact, uh, this is a little advanced, but I want to show two examples of the noise. If you look at this, this profile, there's a signal level, but also it involves noise. And this one, it involves noise. And, but it, this two shows two kind of different nature, different category of noise. This one, you see the level of noise, even the signal level is high, the level standard deviation of noise remains the same. You notice that? And the lower one, you look at that, when the signal is higher, you see the noise is higher too. And both of these, you have to understand uh, when you are dealing with this imaging and image analysis. And I have to say, this constant amplitude noise is more likely to coming from electronic noise. So it doesn't depend on the level of the signal, okay? However, what's interesting here is that this some noises are depending on the signal level. In this case, you see noise is higher when the signal is high. A good example for this is that uh, photon shot noise. So if you have higher level of signal, the level of fluctuation is goes to high. In photon shot noise case, the level of noise is higher to the square root of the signal. So hopefully you understand that and how do we define signal to noise ratio? Yeah, uh, you can define that signal level with respect to the background noise. That's a good way. So that's how we define. So average signal in your region of interest divided by the standard deviation of the background, which is actually root mean square value of the intensity fluctuation of the background. Hopefully this will set you giving some uh, understanding. But the last thing I want to describe you about even more important thing to us, because even if there's a signal and noise, what if the background level is so high that it's hard to distinguish what the object is in relation to the background. So the difference is really important in, in that aspect, okay? So then I, I call you contrast. So I want to define contrast to noise ratio, which is actually more important for us to perceive in an image. So here I brought a simulation uh, from this website. So this is noise level one, two, three, four. And remember contrast defined by signal level difference to the background. So the contrast can be one to three. You see, of course, this one to three, contrast to noise at three is gray. If contrast to noise ratio below one, you start to having difficulties figuring out. So when we talk about determining the image quality, especially visualizing or perceiving the presence of object shape with respect to background, it's better to use contrast to noise ratio because ultimately the ability to visualize a structure 
depends on the contrast noise ratio. Or let's say you are a radiologist trying to find out tumor in your x-ray image. You want to detect that lesion or tumor, you really depend on contrast to noise ratio. Then how you define contrast to noise? It's easy. You, you divide contrast to noise level. The noise level you can use background standard deviation. But what's contrast? That's a signal minus background. Remember, we just described signal to noise ratio as not having subtraction of this background. So here I want to explain you. So when to use and how can we know the difference between signal to noise ratio versus contrast to noise ratio, specifically in image analysis. I have to say this definition can be different or more refined in different area, such as let's say image uh, vision science, uh, image processing field, it can be defined different. So you have to also understand that uh, uh, category of uh, this explanation. So simply SNR versus CNR is signal divided by noise or contrast divided by noise. And what do I mean by this signal and noise? It's more like uh, when there is an image, let's say you know this is an object of interest, you want to have uh, uh, a region of interest or in the signal, the average pixel and the standard background of region of interest. That's SNR. What about contrast to noise ratio? Exactly the same, but just this, instead of signal, you have to subtract the background average, which makes you as a contrast. Does it make sense? So to make it even uh, further understanding, I brought two examples here. So let's say like this one, uh, you know, roughly there are some you know, round objects over here, but it's kind of noisy, both of them. So you define your region of interest in the signal, and that's how you calculate, and region of interest in your background. And so if average signal strength is 150, let's say, and standard deviation of this background was 10. What's the signal to noise ratio? And by definition, the signal divided by the noise is 150 divided by 10 is 15, which is pretty high. But you know, like in this case, the background is a little high. So if the average of the background is almost 100 instead of 150, what's the contrast to noise ratio? Then you have to subtract 150 of signal minus the background level of 100. So that's a 50 divided by standard deviation, background of noise, this is fine. So this is how the difference is. Even if the signal to noise ratio might be big, but if the background level is high, then you may not have as high contrast to noise ratio. Eventually, the, the ability to distinguish signal to background and the object depends on the contrast to noise ratio. But if you look at many websites and uh, literature, you will find out this may be used as uh, interchangeable. So often people just say signal to noise ratio and but the signal you look at the profile, they actually mean the contrast. So uh, even if it can be confusing, just bear in mind that contrast often considered as signal because sometimes people just subtract the background and then use it as a signal and subtracting background makes it really a contrast.